Hi everybody, welcome to Season 3 of What's IG and Crashing On. I'm Karen Walby solomon and I'm your host. And we're here to talk about what's hot in pop culture. Welcome to Episode 9 of Season 3 of What's IG and Crashing On. I'm Karen Walby solomon and I'm here today with Leanne... Lakshmi Philipson, how are you doing, my girl? I'm good. How are you? How was your week? I'm fine. My week is good. Actually, when I said my girl, I in my head I sounded like um, Amanda Bynes in in um, she's the man when she's like, "What up, bro? <laughs> brothers, <laughs> brethren." <laughs> I'm watching a lot of TikToks where people are using that sound and like are people dressing up like as as Amanda Bynes. In, in She's mm, the Man she's in like a, man. for like Halloween or something and, I, and it makes me laugh every time like I'm watching the movie for the first time even though I mean, but anyway it's actually one of the ones we need to rewatch because we've been on a because Netflix got What a Girl Wants which yes. is and Colin Firth so we watched that uh. one and I was like oh I'm out of bites it's so funny <laughs> Yeah. Why are you trying so hard to be so wait wait to be like everybody else when you were born to be what is what is that saying? To stand um, out. To stand something? out, yeah. yeah. Why are you trying so hard to fit in when you were born to stand out? Oh, I love that line. Love that line. Everywhere. I'm like, you're right, boy with the spiky hair. Why am I trying so hard to fit in? I was born to stand out. <laughs> Where's him Oliver? Where's him Oliver? He looks like an Oliver. Yeah, I feel like his name was Oliver. It's um, been a while since I watched, so. I mean, my memory is shit, so please don't ask me <laughs> any more questions. <laughs> don't ask me any more questions. So we have a great show today. Um, we're joined by um, George Mguni, who's otherwise known as OK Wasabi. Um He's a sketch comedian. He's a TV presenter, online content creator. He does a lot of things. And he also knows a shit ton about Marvel. He has read the comics. He's super into the MCU and all the different shows, Netflix shows, whatever. And I sp- I chatted to him before and we spoke about the Eternals. So if you have not seen Eternals, I'm going to let, I will remind you after the end and I'll do a little shiz, like a little chat, <laughs> but um do not listen because we spoil everything. Like maybe not everything, but we spoil the important parts. So if you have not seen the the film, please jump off and come back when you have. Um, but we talk about that. We talk about um, uh, what's coming up, the uh, multiverse Spider-Man of madness, TV. the new Spider-Man movie. Um, we talk about um, the, the Marvel Netflix shows. We even spoke a bit about Saturday Night Live. Um, you guys know how much I love Saturday Night Live. So, um, and he was very inspired by it, and he references, you know, um, the era that inspired him, which which was great because that was when I also watched. But um, lovely conversation. He's amazing. Um, he has thousands of followers, so most people know he's amazing. But but yeah, so that's coming up in this episode. But before we get to that, we have. A, Two pieces of celeb. There's a lot that's going on in Celebville, but because our chat with George was so long, we have to kind of narrow it down to two things. Um, so Leanne and I picked two, which we were particularly intrigued by this past week. Um, and the first is our girl Kim Kardashian has been po- spotted with young Pete Davidson, the man Everybody who's just is sugar. <laughs> You know, I, I quite like him. You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I, I didn't before. When he was dating Phoebe, the, his last girlfriend, I was like, what is it with this guy? I can't anymore. And now I'm yeah. just like, you know what? <laughs> I think this man. I've, I've seen Kings of Saturn Island. That's his mm. semi-biopic mm. what, what movie. Mm. Um, and I've obviously been seeing a lot of clips of him in interviews and and stuff and I get it because when you first see him he's just what is happening such such chaotic energy right um but the more you you get to know his 
character or the persona that he's obviously putting out there for people. And to be fair, I do think it's because he comes across as a genuine, authentic person. Like, he knows he's a mess. He acknowledges he's a mess and he pokes fun at himself, which isn't a thing. I think a lot of people try to do it or do it well, but he does it exceptionally well. Um, mm-hmm. And he just has that, like, good guy energy. So, I mean, I can, I, I get it. I get Pete Davidson. Do I get Pete Davidson and Kim Kardashian? Still no. <laughs> I'm just, it's just, it's too much. It's too much. But um, in Saturday Night Live, when like, he does this bit on the weekend update show, where he just is like, talks about his life. And his life yeah. is always just chaotic enough. That, but he's, <laughs> as you say, he's, he's very good at like, at like being authentic and honest. And it feels it real. So like, you feel like he's letting you in. So when he was with yeah. Ariana, he spoke about, you know, their relationship and how she was releasing a song with his name on. And he's like, you know, even if we break up, she'll still be making money off my name. Whenever mm-hmm. someone listens to that song, and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. And then he went on again to talk about, like, um, he's like, how come when I get seen, like, when I'm seen with, like, hot girls, people always have a problem with it. But every, but then he's like, Colin Joe hangs out with hot people all the time and no one says anything. <laughs> he's, he's rubbing shoulders. Um, who knows what else with the Avengers. And I, and like, and, and I'm the problem. And, um, so I always I, I do enjoy that about him, um, but I mean we it's it's yet to know if they are actually like together. There's no pictures of them like hooking up. They could just be friends. They could have got along at the show and just been hanging out. So yeah, I think so far the news we know is that there was obviously the picture of them at that on a theme ride or whatever, holding hands. Mm. That's the one where everyone lost their mind. But since then, uh, Kim has shown up in Staten Island. And it appears they had dinner at his favorite pizza place. Um, and there are pictures. And the pictures are hilarious. Just because. So it's Kim rocking up in Kim outfits. Like <laughs> black velvet skin tight dress that like goes to her shoes. And she's got the gloves on and she's got the shades on. And then he's like in a green hoodie with his <laughs> blonde hair. And I'm just like, well, what is happening? why <laughs> but in saying that like i said I, I i've been watching obviously so many tiktoks about this and one of one of them said like i think because pete is just such a nice guy he just has like good guy energy i think that's how he's getting all these a-list celebs just because i i don't think Hollywood's filled with the nicest types of people. And so if you're coming mm-hmm. across someone who's down to earth and genuine and is like, I am what I am, yeah. that must be refreshing. That must be good to want to hang out with. Also, we all know he's hung. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but like, I don't know. I like this for Kim. I'm like, you know, I want, like, but they say he hasn't. F- Somebody said that, like, he hasn't filmed anything for this show, so it means it's serious. So it's mm. not, like, it's not PR or anything like that. Um, wow. So, and I know they were also seen at, like, they were at, like, a private club in New York where just, like, publicists and, like, some of, the, of, some of Kim's close friends were. And I, I, just, I just think Kim needs a break after Kanye, to be honest. Like, if he's a break, if he's just, like, something for a couple of months, if he's just someone who's down to earth, as you say, like, then that's a good thing. Like, you know, just yeah. give the girl a break. Like, let her chill and not have to worry about what her yeah, husband or non- mom is going to say. Yeah, or in a non high risk situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But according to Kanye, is- they're still married, so... She's still his wife. There's no, he hasn't gotten any divorce papers or anything. So, oh, is he like weighed in on the situation? Well, he he was asked about it before the pictures came out. So they were, he was just asked about Kim, and then she had made a comment when she was on SNL and like, oh, I divorced him, and she's he's like, she said on SNL she divorced me, but but I haven't seen any divorce papers or something like that. She's still my wife. So oh, wow. I don't know what's going on. But I feel like the news will come out soon enough. 
because Jenna will go to her favorite tabloid <laughs> TMZ and tell them what needs to be, what's going on. It'll get leaked so we just, in time for the reveal. <laughs> yeah, it'll leak. <laughs> so, so we will know soon enough with Kim. Um, and this, that's also refreshing. You know, with some celebs, you never know what goes on. And Nina, all respect to them. But, like with... But also, um, okay. I appreciate celebs that are doing what celebs need to do and, like, giving us chaotic energy to, like... <laughs> eat off of and wonder about and talk about like i appreciate both of them coming together to form this ridiculous <laughs> union so that we can once again escape the mundaneness of our lives <laughs> like thank you side side note um it's also talking about pete davidson kaylee kaylee kuoko whatever she was being interviewed by someone and they asked her um so is the man of steel made of really made of steel and talking about Henry Cavill because she was seen with him like a couple of years ago yeah, yeah, and yeah. she was like I don't know and they were like mm, she's lying <laughs> so like she's like I don't know I don't know she knows she um, knows yeah she they knows. play that yeah, she, <laughs> I think she knows um, uh, but also um, over this weekend we had Chris Pratt, they call him Chris Pratt. Um, some drama with the him. Pratt. So, the Pratt hello. Chris Pratt. <laughs> so he posted on Instagram uh, like a dedication to his wife, Catherine Schwarzenegger. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, like he posted a whole, um, you know, my wife. She she puts up with a lot. And if I don't remember, I don't know if you have his post there. Um, so I'm, I'm going to read it because I, I have it open. Guys, for real, look how she's looking at me. I mean, find you somebody that looks at you like that, you know? We met in church, full stop. <laughs> she's given me an amazing life, a gorgeous, healthy daughter. She chews so loudly that sometimes I put in my earbuds to drown it out. But that's love. She helps me with everything. In return... Periodically, I open a jar of pickles. That's the trade. Her heart is pure and it belongs to me. My greatest treasure right next to my Ken Griffey Jr. upper deck rookie card, which if you know, you know he's saying a lot. It's her birthday in about six weeks. So if I don't get her anything, I'll tell her to look back on this post. Love you, honey. Why not just wait for a birthday also to post that? Like I know. Also, the fact that you were saying that in six weeks you're going to forget is very weird. I mean, that's not the weirdest part of this post, but that was very <laughs> strange. You didn't have to put that in there. You could have just been like, love you, honey. Thank you, goodbye. Do you know? <laughs> anyway. So so a lot of people I was causing a bit of an uproar because um, his um, his son, um, Jack, by Anna Faris, is, um, mm-hmm. was premature and he wasn't that healthy when he was born. He had a lot of problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were saying like the whole point that he 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 like he, he referred to their child as my healthy daughter was very insulting. Like a slight. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think for me it was it was that which was odd, but then it was also the fact that he never, if it's meant to be a post as a tribute to your wife, he never referred to anything about her that was not removed of him so it Mm. was her heart belongs to me she looks at me she's given me an amazing life um it it was just it was a very self-centered way of posting and and it was so interesting because i saw a tiktok by a guy and he was basically saying like in post-christian communities there was a realization of how men spoke about their partners particularly if you were like in leadership within the church mm. um and 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 the way it was was very like look at my wife she's so beautiful she's so good for our family she's such a great homemaker and just it had that energy um mm. which was just yeah it, it, people are not people without the patriarchy and the yeah, yeah, just it, it just felt icky, just icky. Mm. But he gives bad vibes. Like I used, I, I used to be like a very avid 
listener to Anna Faris's podcast when they were still together. And he was so nice. And I really, like, I was really, like, sad when they got divorced. Mm. But now seeing what he's become, and I don't know if he was like this before or, you know, if, you know, he, 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 that was like, he found the church after he was with her or whatever. Mm. But, um, but, but like, just like seeing how it was, I'm like, oh my girl got out. She's got like a nice, healthy relationship now. Yeah. Like, and she's just, she just seems like she's like having a better life. And it's, it's sad, but like, you know, shame. He's, Chris Pratt. I just, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when, when people were saying that he was the worst Chris? <laughs> and then all the Avengers like made a statement like, this guy is so He's great. Movie. Yeah, but they said that because he was making homophobic comments. Like, guys, was it because there was the reason the worst Chris thing came about was because he made comments? No, it was just like people were doing that one Christmas go. So it was like, so say it was like Evans, uh, Pine, Hemsworth, and then everyone, and Pratt, and everyone said Pratt must go. And they're like, only one, like well, one Pratt must go. go. I'm so sick of him. <laughs> um, I don't like him. <laughs> he his and his wife stay at him weirdly and like go to church fine and make his guardians movie so on that <laughs> guardians note um here's your last reminder if you have not seen the eternals please jump off the podcast because we go deep deep and if you have seen the eternals this is such like, i'm not just saying this because i was part of the conversation but this is such a rewarding conversation and such a great um analysis of the film so i hope you enjoy and let us know what you think we will chat to you again at the end of the year hi george welcome so much to welcome so much welcome to <laughs> what's ign crashing on how are you uh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for uh, I'm I'm gonna enjoy being here already. I can tell. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain. Um, yeah, I'm, I can't complain. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Um, mm. So so I want to get you on to chat about Marvel because I know yes. what a big Marvel fan you are because I've been following <laughs> you for so long, and um, and yeah, I mean it's. Okay, we can we can talk about that in a second. But yes, like, yes. Um, so I know you're a comedian, you're a TV presenter, you influencer, all these things. But sure. um, and I'm sure most of the listeners know know that as well. But for those who don't, tell us some more about you. Like, tell us about sure. who you are and what you do. Sure. So uh, yeah, I uh, my name is Okie Wasabi. Real name George, <laughs> uh, but people on the internet know me as Okie Wasabi. Um, yeah, I'm a online content creator. I mostly came in the game by making comedy skits and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that was like, what, eight years ago now. So I've been in the game for a while. Uh, now what I do mostly now is TV presenting um, brand collaborations uh, and uh, yeah, still video creation, which is my first passion and stuff like that. And like you said, I'm a huge um, comic book fan. I think uh, a lot of people think I'm very biased towards uh, Marvel and maybe it's true, but um, I, yeah, I just gravitate towards more MCU movies, but I do love uh, DC movies too. But yeah, in general, in, in, mm. in general, I'm just a, a huge nerd because <laughs> um, it's just comic books. It's just anime, whatever. So I, you couldn't have picked a better guest today. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that I, that's why I said I was my oh, I was shooting my shot. I was like, this is the yes, best yes. person I can ask. <laughs> Let me ask him and see if he's keen. Um, yes. So, like, one thing that I've always um, like I've loved about your journey is that mm. you know if we look at like people who who've made a career in sort of comedy and stuff, they usually yes. start with stand up. And like, yes, I yes. love that you're like you start. Oh, I don't know if you started, but I mean, like your your public started online. Yeah, and with sketch, like I love yes. sketch with my whole entire heart. Exactly. So, like... yes. yes, yes, yes. I mean, I think it's it's. I was greatly influenced by uh, um, who is this? DSTV giving us Saturday Night Live. Oh. Uh, that was like. Uh, I think that was the point in my life where when I was in what, primary or high school, probably primary. 
And Saturday Night Live used to literally play every Sunday morning, I think, or Saturday night. Yeah. And yeah, I think I fell in love deeply with uh, sketch comedy uh, back then. And uh, with um, the all-star team, to my, okay, to me, it's an all-star team with people who are legends now, but they weren't, I don't think they were legends back then, from Tina Fey to Andy yeah. Samberg uh, to Jason Sudeikis, who's doing, um, uh, what's the soccer TV game? Episode. Soccer Ted Lasso, yeah. Oh, those are my those are my people. Those are like the people I grew up on. I was like, that's my Amy Poehler. That's my all star team. So, yeah, they played a huge um, thing in hand in me starting with sketch comedy and say, I want to do that. And and besides, I think I have huge huge stage fright. That's why when people always ask me, people would always ask me like, Hey, George, do you want to do this MC gig and stuff like that? There's a corporate, you know, I don't, I don't MC. I don't, I have huge st- stage fright. That's why I don't think I've done stand up yet. Cause it's just, I think I like uh, sketches because I can shoot and nah, I don't like that take. Let's record mm. it again, edit, cut. And then, you know, but with stand up, if you don't make people laugh right now, it's just a mm. quiet room and stuff like that. But yeah, I guess we all have our fears basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so like um like what I do like or what SNL has done is that they yeah. I think especially with like when Andy Samberg them started with like the video shorts. Yes. Like, it's just a oh. new way of doing it. That's oh. so brilliant. <laughs> they 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 killed it. Like they 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 were really amazing. Like, I think speaking of Andy Samberg, there's a skit that he did um called uh My Sister's What? I don't know, but he uses um it's a very big skit because Jason uh Jason Derulo even has a song using that sample and stuff like that. And it was called SNL Digital Shorts. Mm. And they they revolutionized that part of SNL and made it uh, that um, just much more amazing. And yeah, they were huge inspirations to me. And like, that's why I think uh, I got into skits and I was like, oh, I can do what they, those guys are doing, mm. literally. Yeah. And you probably opened a lot more doors for, for other sketch com- like comedians in South Africa. Because I mean, like, I didn't see it before you. I mean, I'm sure it was there, but I mean, I hadn't seen it like a really big year before you other than like, you know. I, I, I would I would hope so. If anyone says this, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't disagree with it. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm like, you know, maybe we, because it's huge now. Yo, yeah. It is <laughs> very huge now. Like it's all, all over Instagram. It's all over. I think if, if I didn't show a lot of people uh, how, how, how to do this thing, it was maybe because I was probably maybe just lucky that I literally begged my mom to get me a, a phone that can shoot uh, videos and stuff like that. And other people probably knew how to, they probably wanted to do skits, but mm-hmm. they weren't so fortunate. And um, it's it's also right now it's where technology is meeting uh, also accessibility because back mm-hmm. then, yo man, getting a, a video camera phone was not easy that's why I had to pay and that's why you know it was like a huge investment which was mm. and, and worth it but now like whenever people ask me would say hey George how do I start my career online how do I start my YouTube channel what, how do I I'm like hey guys you know your phones have pretty mm. good cameras these days it's not like back in the day where uh it's either you get a camera or you can't shoot now like people are are shooting amazing things with their phones and Phones, quality is amazing, but people really love story more than uh, everything else. Like, I think it goes story, audio, and then picture in, in technical terms, because people will love story. They'll watch terrible quality, but as long as it's funny, and as long <laughs> as they, can, they can hear something, they can hear pretty clearly. Mm. So, hey, like, it's, there's, these days, there's no excuse. Literally, you can pick up your phone and just go viral tomorrow. So TikTok Literally. is like what TikTok is right now. Exactly. <laughs> TikTok kids are, are killing it. The kids, they are killing it. And they just literally picked up a phone and they said, hey, I've got something relatable to shoot. Mm. Let's go. Yeah, pretty much. So like, um, so obviously I've been following you on Twitter for a while. And, and something that I always like, what I like about your account is that you have good engagement with your followers. Like yeah. if somebody like comments on something, you yeah. like, you will respond back with like a proper thing. You have the discussion with them. Yes. yes. So like, yes. have you found that's been like beneficial for you? I think, I think so. Like I try my best to, uh, to respond to as many people as I can, because uh, it's also, I think people who, who have the same interests gravitate mm. towards uh towards uh, my account and stuff like that so it's easy to talk to like i don't really like uh talking about things that are 
that have nothing to do with me or like mm. yeah, I'll see maybe trending topics and I'm like uh, I have no opinion on that but if it's, it's music or it's comics or something like that and uh, it's easy to engage with and I'm like hey and I'm very strong about my opinion mm. I, I try now to to like uh, relax because I feel like you know what we all have our different opinions like yeah. uh, we all have a different rating towards this song or this movie and stuff like that but I, I get the, at the end of the day I think t- that's what Twitter was made for it's just engaging responding and joking mm. literally yeah Okay, so let's talk about the big issue right now, yes. the Eternals. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, the most divisive Marvel movie I've ever experienced. But, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, maybe I, Captain Marvel was also pretty divisive. You know, I was actually <laughs> about to say that, like, uh, Captain Marvel also was, uh, but I'm, I'm, I was just shocked, man. Before I watched the movie, I was just shocked of the ratings uh, mm-hmm. uh, before it, the movie actually came out. But um, yeah, eh, there's a lot to unpack about this movie. There's a lot. <laughs> I won't even lie to you. There's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack. So, okay. So this is going to be um, spoiler galore. I'm going to okay, spoil spoiler spoiler warning before allowed. this. Yeah, spoilers okay. allowed. I, can't, I don't like talking about things without spoilers. I'm the worst. Exactly. I think it's hard. I think it's <laughs> close to impossible, actually, yeah. talking about a movie. Yeah. And I feel like a spo- anything can be a spoiler for some people. They'll be like... Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. let's so so don't so let's feel free. What did you think of the film? Whew. So um I was like I said, I was pretty excited for this movie. This movie was literally uh, The Avengers 2012, I think. This is this is like a, a, a team up. I don't remember Marvel doing another team up uh Guardians, in recent maybe. years. Uh, Guardians, yes, Guardians and Guardians are so uh with the director um mr gun um yeah james gun i think he nailed it obviously mm-hmm. um the first the second one and now we're waiting for the third one this one mm, <sighs> <sighs> this is this is a tough uh talk man <laughs> you know um i was hoping the um, i didn't re- here's the thing i don't like watching trailers anymore like I think mm. trailers these days are cut so differently. Like they they reveal too much, and I understand. We I think it's harder to pull people into the cinemas because um, just wait a few weeks and you'll find it online. You know mm. that's what life is right now, and um, so they have to work extra hard to pull people to come to the cinemas. So we have to reveal a couple of things. Um, that's why uh, I'm so surprised with uh, Marvel's marketing for Spider Man because they they they're really not showing much they're really mm. not showing much but uh with other trailers man they they just like let's just go let's just go so i watched a few trailers and the trailers you know impressed me it's a marvel movie of course like uh, mm. i was like okay this is nice it's gonna be the standard marvel movie and it's gonna deliver but to be honest with you oh um i'm not a huge fan of the movie eh? like um I, I gave it on social media i gave it a six and a half Mm. you know i gave it a six and a half and the characters were amazing the characters were great um Salma is amazing um angelina jolie is amazing everyone man the, the, the way the characters are yeah. written and the, re- the relationships between how they interact everyone every different eternal has a different relationship towards each other so everyone's just fleshed out everyone is just um you know we know who who they are we have a sense of family within mm. them and stuff like that it's just i am still literally trying to figure out what i didn't like i'm still trying to figure because the fight scenes also like um were good um i forgot the speedster's name but i think that's my um makari yes she's 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 my standout she was amazing her scenes were amazing she's you know i think if the fl- if they're gonna do a flash movie i hope i see what I saw in the Eternals because mm. the fighting, everything, like she's amazing. Her running is, is great. I'm still trying to figure out what fell flat in terms of, because um, the movie is long. The movie is long. Yeah. So they had enough time to maybe deliver on everything. And usually I can, when I leave a, a movie, whether it's being Marvel or whatever, I have favorite parts. And I was mm. like, oh, did you see that part? Um, you know, that's my standard part. But um I think the thing that int- that interested me, that stayed with me the longest, only came after I watched the movie, which was the, um, the post credit scene where I realized uh, who Chloe just re- uh, revealed that the person who yeah. Keith was talking to 
is Blade. And I was like, oh my goodness, uh, that's amazing. Mm. That's I wish we saw him, but they probably haven't done the costumes and stuff yet. So um, that's the most exciting part for me. The movie, though, it was like, um, the movie felt like episode one, two, three of a 10 episode yeah. series. That's yeah, it perfect. felt like episode one. Yes, it felt like episode <laughs> one, two, three of a 10 episode series. Because uh, with WandaVision, I always tell people, I'm like, Guys, if you can go through the first three episodes, mm. trust me, you're in for a ride. After those three episodes, it's amazing TV. So it's just a setup. And that's why I'm not mad at it. Eternals mm. is a setup. And we're probably going to enjoy their future appearances way more. Like, we're probably going to enjoy when they show up in maybe Doctor Str- whatever movie they show up in, or maybe even the sequel, even though the sequel is probably like five years away, mm. Eternals 2. We're probably going to enjoy that. So we, we needed this movie to explain who they are because it's such um a big concept to explain yeah to, to to people like to uh guardians was weird you know to explain to people to introduce people to a talking raccoon <laughs> uh a blue woman and stuff like that it was pretty complicated to explain to people especially people who've never heard of the but eternals too eternals i've never read an eternals book mm. i just know i've just heard stuff from youtube um videos about them uh, I know Jack Kirby created them and stuff like that, but I have uh, never really read an Eternals book. So I I just, um, before the movie, I just caught up on who they are and what they mean to the Marvel Universe. And I was like, this is very space opera vibes and yeah. it's going to be really hard to pull off. So it was really like a great job for the director to try and explain and introduce these people mm. and also tell us, hey guys, Actually, these people have been around before even the first Avenger. These people have been around before everyone. They yeah. they were Jesus. the first superheroes on Earth. So uh, she, I think that she did it well. The jumping back and forth through times and stuff like that. It was a lot though, like jumping back to mm. the BC times, AD times, and then to present times. It, it, it was all that was well done. But I don't know. There's something I'm still trying to figure out on what what fell flat to me yeah. and i think i need a second watch honestly you know i also I'm, I'm also thinking like i need a second watch mm, like, I, mm. I i enjoyed it while i was watching it um yes it's it's, it's probably not like my top 10 but yes. like but mm. but i was but i was like I, I don't see it doesn't seem like that bad like i was i was yes i wasn't bored i was i, mm. I, I understood everything that was happening yes. like compared to other movies yes. but um because I mean, Thor the Dark World, I don't know what was going on. Yo, <laughs> it's so funny because I don't think I finished that movie. Eh? I think I tried to watch it on my couch recently, like three years ago, and I fell asleep. So I don't think I finished that movie, like literally. And that's so weird for me to even say after 25 movies, mm. I think that's the only movie I ever. But yeah, yeah, you're right. It's very, it, it was entertaining, it was engaging, everything, you know, you were yeah. understanding everything and stuff like that. But um, I don't know, man, like, because I know Captain Marvel, I felt like they could have done way better. Like after mm. I was done watching the movie, I was like, this movie could have been way better. But here I was like, this movie is cool. It's not as bad as everyone's saying online, mm. you know. Then what happened? Like, wh- what's going on? Maybe I- I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure it out. I feel like it's a honestly. story thing for me. Like yes. it's like something at the like like the like the myth and stuff I kind of get and I see why yeah. they had to set it up and I'm glad they did. Um mm. but there's something with like the main conflict like between like not that I did like I bought the whole Icarus thing like that made sense to me. Yes, yes, but yes. like when that mixed with the deviant started like intersecting a chat it just seemed a little bit messy for me. Yes, yes. Like yes. there's something I and you know I think um these people had to supplement a villain with Icarus because the deviants went, went much. They were just mm. CGI monsters who don't have like real backstories until, until the, like uh, halfway through the movie when they start develop, when they start being able to speak and stuff like that. Mm. But there was no um, villain you walk away with and saying, wow, that's a great villain. Yeah. The Eternals were just fighting monsters, like mm. CGI monsters who couldn't speak uh, or anything like that. And I think Icarus was just um, a supplementary villain also. And even he wasn't a, a real villain. He just yeah. thought he was doing the right thing. And then at the end, he just, you know, uh, decides to kill himself and stuff like that. So I don't think 
it was satisfactory in the villain's uh, sense, but also at the same time, like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a startup movie. It's the, mm. it's the first, it's the first movie. So we're probably going to see better opponents later and stuff like that, because, um, we um if I can just check, check at the state of Mar- of the state of Marvel Cinematic Universe right now, we are probably back in 2008 again, where the Incredible Hulk just came out, um, uh, Iron Man just came out and stuff like. That. Because now we're just setting up multiverse and and space uh, and and universal wars and stuff mm-hmm. like that, with um, introductions of Eternal. Everything everything was so space based. I mean everything was so Earth based mm-hmm. in the first ten years. And that was great. And right now, I think we're setting up the space and uh, multiverse, and because uh, there's so much happening right now, and like uh, in terms of what Spider Man's going to probably do, what Doctor mm-hmm. Strange is probably going to do, but uh, because it's a setup, sometimes setups are not mind blowing. You know, mm-hmm. they're not mind blowing. But um, usually, the like I said, the first three episodes of a series also rarely do they capture you or something mm-hmm. like that. And like, like Wonder Vision, you had to go through the first three episodes, and then you're like, "Wow, this is a real series." But um, yeah, that's the one thing I didn't like. Also, the the villain, the villain side of the story was a bit lacking. They didn't have really a proper villain. You know, mm. you could say the um, oh, what, what is what what is the uh, the oh, um, ah the celestial <laughs> the celestial. You could yeah. say that's also a villain, but he didn't really uh, show himself that much and. He, he was just a villain in the shadows, basically. Mm. Literally just a villain in the shadows. But um, moving on to stuff that I really, I didn't understand. So one thing they said is that um, uh, they couldn't interfere with uh, human uh, humans' wars and stuff like that, mm. you know? And I understand that they can't in- interfere when f- humans fight humans. But uh, Thanos, I think he is half um, eternal and half deviant. Mm. so he's not human at all and they could have um helped there but there's only so much you can do with story so i I think they just literally brushed that underneath the carpet Mm. because they were supposed to intervene there because he's he's technically a deviant yeah exactly yeah and even if he wasn't a deviant it'd still be an alien so Mm. they, they need to help out there because it's not human versus human but um, I thought they would explain that in the movie and stuff like that, but they didn't, they didn't explain. And I also found uh, it peculiar that they put uh, the Black Knight arc here because the Black Knight felt like uh, commercials. <laughs> like it was, yeah, here's two minutes. Here's two minutes. Here's two minutes. <laughs> your I uncle, think just, your uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They just try to find a movie where they could just quickly introduce this character and... I was like, okay, at, at, at least we have a, a, a new character on top of these like six or seven mm. characters. So he's probably going to get his own Disney show or maybe a movie even. But um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I didn't, it didn't change my life. That's what I'm trying to say. Like it didn't change <laughs> my life. I, did, I didn't walk away like, wow, that's my new favorite um, Marvel movie or top five of the year or anything like that. Because Unfortunately, I watch this. I, I I love watching Marvel movies in IMAX. You know, mm. I think you benefit from the sound and everything like that. Uh, unfortunately, I watched this movie at a, like a normal cinema because it was the um, a pre premiere. Mm. Um, and I, in my head, I was like, okay, shop. I'm gonna watch Eternals, and then next week I'm probably gonna go to IMAX and watch it again so I can get the real experience. Mm. But now I'm so lazy. Like I'm literally very lazy to just go watch it again i'm like ugh, if i do have to watch it again i'll probably just wait for it to come out on disney plus or something like that mm. but uh right now i'm just feeling so lazy so <laughs> just to that that fact should tell you that uh i'm not really i was really i wasn't really moved by the movie mm. i wasn't really but people have such different opinions because i see a friend of mine came back and said um that he felt like it was like an eight Mm. you know so it was like a really good movie and stuff like that and i was like yeah i expect i expected people to have very different opinions because i saw another opinion that says you're very generous with the six and a half i saw that tweet yeah <laughs> very generous and i was like you know we have different opinions i think uh these movies touch us in different ways you mm. know you, you pick out things in different ways and, and you have and different like preferences that. also there's some people that don't like these like space-based like these very mytholic like 
mm. mythology mm. based exactly a movie. exactly and you're not going to because yeah, this is this is about to be very if people i think the first 10 years of marvel was pretty straightforward mm. but i think they're about to go very weird i think they are they're they're really about to go hello they're going to take it to um weird places where you really have to follow along Mm. You know, I've seen people ask that what movies can I quickly watch to watch Infinity War or Endgame? Because I remember it must have been tough back in 2018 and 19 to not have been following the MCU. And mm. then now Infinity War and Endgame are the biggest pop culture things. And then now you're in a, a, a scramble to try and catch up. Mm. And you have to watch like 18 movies and stuff like that. I would see people saying, what two or three movies can I watch? to catch and the, there's no two or three movies you have to watch the <laughs> have to watch the whole thing literally there's no two or three movies so now i think from now from here on it's probably going to get worse like mm. um they're going to go very weird they're they're going to go deep in space um i see they're introducing um adam warlock yeah they, they and in phase in phase one two and three and f- yeah phase one two and three guardians were the weirdest thing mm. got it but now when they even introduced um, Harry Styles, I yeah. didn't know who the hell that was. I was like, <laughs> and then he says it's Thanos' brother. I was like, I've never really he- heard of <laughs> Thanos' brother. And who is this um, leprechaun that's coming out? <laughs> Usually, you know, post credit scenes, you're like, oh, as a Marvel fan, you're like, hmm. oh my God. And then you have to explain to everyone else. Like, oh, guys, don't worry. That was just... You know, back like back when we watched Avengers and uh, Thanos put his hand in the in the gauntlet and, and said, "I'll do this myself." You know, you, you you were like, "Oh, you know, guys, that's just Thanos." You know, Thanos is you could explain to people, but this time, this post credit scene, I was like, "I don't know who that who that was." I have no idea who that was. I didn't know Thanos has a brother. Uh, I don't know who that Leprechaun guy is, but I guess we'll see. So that gives me. Like that makes me hopeful that Marvel is just going to go weird for this next 10 years because they have to. I, I think they have to because um I was worried about comic book movie fatigue, mm. you know, because uh generally audiences will get tired of this soon enough. Yeah. But um like the like Westerns were the thing back in the day, and you know, and then now they disappeared. I will be surprised if we get 10 more years. I'll I will honestly be surprised if we get 10 more years. I thought after this end game, people mm. are, are leaving. But if Marvel is able to make a billion dollars with Spider-Man and a billion dollars with Avengers 5 and 6, I'll be like, shame you guys have a 20-year run. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm impressed. I'm, I'm really impressed. But I think they're going to go a little bit more, like as you said, a bit more weird. So probably be a bit more niche. So you have different yes. audiences for different things. Yes. But um, I also only know um, Star Fox from because I I read I read um, like this one line of She Hulk where he gets yes. accused of like um, sexual assault, yes, and then yes, like yes. I don't know much about the character, and then when the leprechaun came, I'm like, what the hell? And then, <laughs> and, then, and then when he came out, and I and I said because I took my nephews and I said like, I I don't think anyone's gonna call this character by its name. They're gonna call him Mary Styles. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. Oh yeah, and Harry Styles. Um, <laughs> and then Harry Styles but, came in. <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad. None, like it's, it's expanding. Uh, it's kind of so sad that um, we kind of lost uh, Robert Downey and mm. and um, and Captain America and um, Chris. But it's 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 cool that we're introducing I, with Eternals. I didn't I didn't think they'd introduce such heavy hitters. Mm. I I liked Marvel's approach in the sense of uh, getting not so known characters, not so known actors mm. to do um, Iron Man to do. So they, they brought underdog characters to do underdog. They brought yeah. in underdog actors to do underdog characters because Iron Man wasn't huge back then, mm. you know. Uh, and Robert Downey Jr. wasn't huge back back then, and now he's the big oh, one of the biggest stars in the world, and Chris Evans too, and stuff like that. And now I think it's a different approach in the sense of they're saying Angelina Jolie, <laughs> uh, Salma Hayek, like legends mm. for such um, for such uh, big roles. And you know, I, I I'm I'm, tra- I'm I'm I want to see how that stra- that strategy pans out and stuff like that because 
Marvel, one thing Marvel never does is fail on, on casting. I think mm. they have amazing casting. Their casting has just been 10 out of 10 for all these years. They've never casted somebody and I was like, ah, that role would have been better with someone else. Mm. They also, they always have great casting from Thanos, Josh Brolin and stuff like that to Robert Downey Jr. being Iron Man to Chadwick Boseman being uh, Black Panther. Their casting is amazing. So mm. with Eternals casting, I, I, I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm surprised they, they, they chose such big names uh, to fill like uh, Athe- uh, Athena, God of War, uh, mm. and Salma Hayek also. But it's cool. Let's see what they're going to do with it. As long as they don't mind sticking around for the next 10 years. Yeah. Because that's what they probably want to have to do. Uh, Angelina's probably signed on, hopefully, to a 10-year, 12-year contract and stuff like that, which I guess is fine. But yeah, yeah, I, I think that's one of the, the good points of the movie. Mm. Like, if you'd ask me, what are some of the good points of Eternals? Like I said, the fight scenes were not bad. They were good. Um, the speedster is amazing. Gilgamesh also is also a favorite. Um, uh, who's the Bollywood star? Um, uh, um, Kingo, Kingo, Kingo. King, yes, yes, yeah. yes. He's also a highlight of the, of the movie with uh, the guy who's doing the documentary for him. <laughs> I like that that dynamic was so was so funny. Uh, it felt like he was vlogging, uh, which is so familiar to me. So I, I like that dynamic. Like I said, the relationships were amazing. The relationships were amazing. Uh, um, the Cersei and uh, Icarus and um, Black Knight triangle was also kind of funny too. Mm. The love triangle between those three uh, characters was kind of funny too. And I don't know if you noticed this, but uh, Marvel really uh uh pushed out so much dc references in this movie yeah (laughs) and i was like yeah superman batman i was like okay what (laughs) is going on like are they and i would love to see um dc do the same thing Mm. in return like as a as a response to that because i was like okay they're referencing superman and stuff like that and batman i'm like okay so in this universe those people are just fictional characters Mm. i guess which is so funny to uh, <laughs> fun to think about i was like okay that's actually uh such a, a fun thought that superman is just a, a character in this universe like a tv character which is pretty dope and <laughs> yeah and i i loved uh brian henry is that his name yeah uh, brian tidy tidy yes yeah, yeah he's he, his character uh-huh. was also dope with the technology was amazing loved his family loved the the son who was intrigued by everyone um yeah man like Character wise, this movie was great. Like, characters, char- yeah. uh, characterization was on point. Um, the characters were well fleshed out. And I wish Salma Hayek got more mm. screen time. I just wish she got more screen time, but also the movie would have been in, would have been three hours then. <laughs> but yeah, everyone else, I felt like they had their chance to shine. When, when, else... when we went to Salma's house and she was yes. dead. Um, yes. I was like, oh my gosh, really? We all exactly, saw like already. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad they did flashbacks. I was like, what? <laughs> exactly. How much like, did they pay for just to, this is a cameo? <laughs> so I'm I'm even asking myself, like, are they going to bring her back somehow? Or because they're just machines so. in the end of the day. Uh, because yeah. yeah, they're just machines, they could just recreate the eternal, but it looked like his her death was final. Mm. And I was like, I thought. Like I said, I thought these people, everyone here is going to stick mm. with Marvel for the next 10 years and stuff like that. But um, they killed Selma and it was like, wow, okay, I thought she's going to have more screen time, which is which is sad, but I, I guess her death was necessary because, you know, people will always cry and say, Marvel, no one dies. It's so, <laughs> Marvel's so soft and stuff like that and everything else, everything by the end of the movie is okay. Everything else by the end of the movie is great. <laughs> There's no consequences in Marvel movies. So I guess I was like, okay, I guess that death was necessary. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, every character, Shem, I, they, they shined. I mm. loved everyone in the movie. Every character shined through that movie. Like it's, it was really well written in that sense. Uh, the director handled that very well. Um, there was a bit of the lack of set pieces, I guess. Like, you know, um, I'm not sure which review I watched, but there were like uh, there was a lack of the the grand finale of a Marvel movie, mm. and yeah, them I guess trying to freeze 
the um, the celestial that's coming out of Earth and um, uh, them fighting Icarus. It felt like a fight scene from the middle of the movie and yeah. not really the end of the movie. Mm. But at the same time, I guess maybe we're spoiled because we know the end of Marvel movies is just like Captain America picking up uh, Mjolnir and <laughs> fighting uh, Thanos. Um, Thanos. Yeah, so that's like screaming and getting out of... I think we're definitely going to scream for Spider-Man. Something mm. amazing is going to happen at the end of Spider-Man. Something amazing is going to happen at the, at the end of Doctor Strange. Um, this fight scene at the end, it felt like it's a fight scene in the middle of the movie. Mm. It was okay. Um, I wish there was bigger set pieces, but maybe it's just we overfed and we just want bigger and bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. So maybe this was nice and compact and wrapped the story up uh, really well. But yeah, I mean, it, we all have different opinions. Some people could have said that's a great fight scene and like that's a great way to end the movie. Mm. But yeah, I mean, it felt like, it felt, you see, it, I can say it felt like Dune in the sense of, Dune was a long movie. But at the end of the movie, I was like, what? It's en- it's over. But they they were explicit in, in telling us, guys, yeah, this is just one. part one. Yeah, this is just part one. So this also felt like, like part one of a, mm-hmm. of a movie and stuff like that. So I felt like I wish part two could come out literally next year. And then mm. they, now they're in the game. They've shopped, we've introduced everyone, we've fleshed out the relationships. Now let's see what these Eternals can really do. Let's mm. see the extent of their powers. Because now Cersei can even turn uh, living beings to objects. Mm. So, you know, the powers are already developing and we're seeing some growth within the, these characters. So there's some potential, some huge potential in, mm. in these characters. And I cannot wait to see what, what they'll do in, in, in the MCU because we'll, we never know where they'll pop up. They, it, couldn't, it wouldn't, it cannot be, I doubt it will be Eternals 2 before we see them again. We'll probably see them uh, in other movies mm. making cameos. Could be Captain Marvel, could be Doctor Strange. Any of these movies actually yeah. are perfect, well, are perfect fits. Or the girl, or Guardians 3, or... Like I can see them I, exactly. Guardians, they would be a perfect fit there mm. too because I think Marvel is it's so fleshed out. The, the MCU is so fleshed out that um, anyone can appear anywhere, which is what uh, I was kind of sad about in internals at the end because I was so sure that someone is going to pop up uh, mm. and say what's going on. The Earth is shaking, and I thought maybe uh, Doctor Strange would show up to come and check out what's going on. Anyone from Earth, like anyone from the Avengers come to check out what's going on. There's a huge disturbance and none of the MCU characters showed up to check what's going on, mm. uh, which I think is a big uh, mistake because would have loved that. I think yeah. that would have given me like, a, like, oh, okay, sharp. Let's not forget this is a connected mm. movie. Uh, but I guess they tried their best with the mentions of the Avengers and stuff like that. But um, I would have loved to see someone else uh, uh, show up in the movie and say, mm. guys, what's going on? What are you guys doing here? Like, I think that um, Shang Chi did that daily wow, is where it was. It felt like its own thing, but then you know we had Wong and we had Oof, like Hulk yeah. and Captain America like popping in just at the end to like sort of like remind mm. us. You just reminded me how much I loved that. You just reminded me mm. how much I loved it. because I think Wong is not um, a difficult character actually to just bring into a movie. So mm. Shang Chi really did that really well. I was like, great, that's amazing. And then the post credit scene, you know, it also, after I enjoyed Shang-Chi so much, after such a good movie, uh, that post credit scene also like made you more excited even. Like, oh yeah. snap, Hulk is here, Captain Marvel is here. It's such a nice reminder that, hey guys, we're in the MCU. But I guess they wanted to have their own little thing mm. on the side, but it would have been so great to see literally anyone sh- come show up and say, guys, what the hell is going on here? Who are you guys? So what are you looking forward to coming up? Looking forward a hundred percent to uh, Spider-Man. I think um, Kevin, Kevin Feige is uh, trying his utmost best to <laughs> temper our um, expectations because it could be, because everyone is right now is expecting everyone from every Spider-Man thing <laughs> ever. Like it's, you know, it's our expectations are really high. Shame. I'm also trying to temper them because 
we I 100% will be I know I'll be disappointed mm. if Toby Maguire isn't there if Andrew Garfield isn't there we all have our fingers crossed that it's literally everyone and I'm just looking forward to much more than movies I'm just looking forward to how they're writing this thing like mm. know, the whole multiverse thing because I don't know if you saw the Mobius trailer the trailer Mm-mm. the Mobius trailer apparently it, it, it references every single Spider-Man that's ever been from Toby Maguire to Andrew Garfield to the Spider-Man now. So is that telling us that after, um, after this movie, after the Spider-Man movie, the MCU might be broken in the sense of um, everything is going to be mismatched. Literally, mm-hmm. they're going to... I'm hoping this means so, uh, Sony and, and, and Disney worked out a deal and now they are closer than before. Yeah. Because... It, it was a weird deal. I've never seen such a weird where they do their own movies there, they do their own movies there, and then we just come together for Spider Man. It's such a weird deal. But now, maybe now they're saying, guys, let's just share these people. Yeah, uh, we'll, 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 you'll mm-hmm. get the profits when we do Spider Man characters, but let's just share these people and let's make them. Or is just Peter Parker going to travel between uh, universes mm-hmm. after this? Like, is he going to go to Venom's place and Mobius' place? And then ha- uh, be able to come back and fight with the Avengers, but I'll just generally like if the Avengers knew who Venom was, mm. and it's just one world now. But uh, that's just business. That's literally just business mm. and it's contracts and signing. So I'm not sure if that would ever happen. But it looks very interesting. And what happened with Loki? What happened with Spider Man? And and because we still don't know who broke the multiverse properly. Like I don't think we have the proper answer because. Was it the the killing of the the one who remains in Loki? Mm. Is it Spider Man interrupting Doctor Strange, or is the multiverse of madness going to have to do something with with it? like which? What is the point? Oh, of Wanda. Mm. Like Wanda. Oh, Wanda. Yes. Oh, Wanda. Yes. Oh, Wanda did something in to because she heard her, her kids at the end mm. of Wanda Vision. She heard them. She probably heard them in another universe where she actually did yeah. have kids. So there's so much we don't know that. Which is the, the the epicenter? What what really broke the multiverse, and uh, how are we going to get the now the X Men? How are mm. we going to get now uh, Fantastic Four? Like, I f- I feel like yo, it's it's going to be a, such a long wait. It, it's it is going to be such a long wait. We're probably like four or five years away from the first mention of um, Wolverine, or mm. they haven't even found Wolverine yet. Uh, so we are still so very far, but I guess these these snacks that we're getting right now with Blade mm. and uh, She Hulk and and I'm I'm also looking forward to see if um because I can see man there's a fight I'm also looking forward to see if Marvel will just agree just to take in uh, Charlie Cox um oh, please. as their girl. Um, this is all I want in life is for mm, the Netflix like, shows to be canon exactly like it's it's <laughs> a, it's, a, it's, a, it's such a weird thing because. I'm like, it's so easy for you guys to do. Like, it's literally easy. There's no, the, you, you've got the characters. You've got the Kingpin. Yeah. You've got the Punisher and stuff like that. Oh, the base uh, Kingpin, the base Punisher. Exactly. I'm like, like a so, base Luke Cage, base Jessica Jones. Oh, I love they have him. the writers. It's so easy for you guys <laughs> to integrate these people into the universe. So I, I think we're just playing a game of, of chicken right now to see mm-hmm. how long it'll take before they reveal and say, okay, guys, you know what? We've heard your cries. These people are now canon. They're in the MCU, and yo, that that'll be amazing. That'll be do amazing. You, and then, do you, do you hear the theory that um that Charlie Cox might be in Spider Man? Yeah, like the, with that, that was the biggest theory when the trailer dropped because mm. they're like, is he the lawyer, the lawyer or something like that? And it, you can't tell me Marvel is not seeing the, mm. the demand. You can't tell me Marvel is not seeing the demand. Uh, everyone wants it. Everyone would be happy with it. And it's just a small character. Like, it, it won't yeah. really destroy much. Uh, I think Jessica Jones and them are, are just street-level heroes. Mm. So it won't destroy them that much. It's just taking out a, a budget of, like, maybe five mil <laughs> and saying, guys, <laughs> give these guys a 12-episode show on, on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Change some slight things away from Netflix mm. and just carry on the story on, on Disney+. Plus. But like literally, this is up to suit suit heads mm. up in the offices, 
and we don't know what will happen. They they Shea Marvel is really good with keeping secrets. Like literally, I saw Harry Styles is in uh, Eternals <laughs> literally maybe two weeks before the movie, but it was just like one tweet and nothing else. Mm. Like it was just one tweet and nothing, and I just decided to ignore it. But they he probably would have already shot the scene by then. And I'm like, they're really good with keeping secrets. So mm-hmm. we don't know what's on the cards. We don't, um, for them, just keeping the footage of, of Spider-Man uh, close to their chest means something huge is going on in that movie. Yeah. And the, the month wait, we have to wait uh, until we actually see it. You know, I doubt they'll drop a second trailer, but they probably will drop a second trailer. But and then mm. that that'll be it. Unlike Eternals, Eternals had 10 trailer, 10, 20 trailers. <laughs> I felt like every time I was scrolling on Instagram, there was an eternal clip. Uh they really pushed this movie. They really pushed it really hard. And I wonder what this low rating, how this low rating will affect them. Mm. Are they just gonna keep it moving? Or are they going to be like, okay, we need to rethink how we do the sequel? Because also I think I'm not sure, but I think they changed the directors uh, for Captain Marvel. I yeah, think they I, did. I, I heard something like that. I don't know if they, the same director because it was a, a, a two team director. Yes, 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 it's a different director. It's um, yes, someone I, I, don't I know. know change- it's someone I know though. Ah, but I'm. Gonna I don't know if they're changing it. them or they're <laughs> keeping them on because yeah, the ratings went so great. But also, man, it's 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 like Captain America, the first one. That's that's not a terrible movie. But as soon as Winter Soldier came along, it was a different ball game. Like that mm. was like, that's a lot of people's favorite Marvel movie, you know, Winter Soldier. And that happened because I think they changed the directors and um, even Civil War was not bad, even though a lot of people don't really like it. Mm. Um, I, I personally think it was a bit too early to adapt Civil War because mm. if they wanted Civil War, it should have been everybody. But um, it's fine as long as we got Spider, I'm just grateful for that movie because it gave us Spider Man and Black Panther. Um, and Black Panther, and was, <laughs> that's the greatest. Inco- uh, that's the greatest Black Panther version we'll see mm-hmm. on screen ever. Uh, but yeah, man, like let, I'm excited for how what's going to go, what's going to happen in the next ten years. I hope they still make a little bit of money in the sense of if, they, if they're not going to touch billions anymore. Mm. I hope it's still profitable for Disney to keep making these movies because as soon as Disney doesn't make, see any money, they'll cut them. And then we're back to the uh, early nineties or really the early two thousands where there were comic book movies, but it's like one a year and like, compared to now, now we get like, I think next year we're getting six movies. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's scary because I'm like, Hey guys, I think you are overwhelming normal people. <laughs> That's just too much movies. At the same time, I'm like, yay, I get to watch six movies uh, in one year, uh, comic book movies in one year. But I'm like, Ish, I feel like people are like, going to get overwhelmed now. They have to go watch Flash, The Batman, and then uh, Doctor Strange and all these movies and stuff like that. But I, I'm just hoping for the best. Can we get 10 more years? And then, mm. you know, you know, I'll be happy. I'll be happy. <laughs> Hey, George, thank you so much for this. This was so much fun. I, I no stress, it. no stress. Uh, it's, 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 it's honestly a pleasure to be invited to a podcast to talk about uh, something that I would talk hours about, basically. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, like I would definitely talk hours about this. Uh, I'm glad we had a time limit because if, uh, if, if, we, if we had to start from, let's, if you said, George, let's start from 2008 and just talk. <laughs> About the Incredible Hulk. I'll do, okay, so the Incredible Hulk. I think they should have. You know, I I, I think <laughs> we could, we could go would, start from two thousand. I would to... love that. Like, <laughs> exactly. That would be that's my ideal day. Like... <laughs> It'd be a six-hour podcast, but uh, we'd get a lot of things uh, done. Yeah, yeah. No, but no, I'm I'm so happy you invited me. Thank you so much. Uh, I love talking about these things. These things, I, I barely get to talk. To, to people about them in such uh, deep uh, analysis ways because people, general audiences just watch the movie and it was nice or it was not mm. nice. But talking, being able to talk about the law and the future, the past and going deep into this. And we haven't really even uh, yeah. touched <laughs> Eternals even that much. I think we could still go 
uh, deeper, like breaking we down could. scene by scene. But this is also just a, uh, a great um, talk that we have right now, definitely. Okay, that was our chat with George Mukuni. You can find him on all social networks at at Okay Wasabi. Okay, now it's time for our crushing on segment. Leanne, what have you been crushing on this week? Um, so I don't know how, but we started watching some Bollywood movies. Um, they are very long, so it's been one a weekend for the last the last two weekends, and we started with Happy New Year, which my husband has been nagging me to watch, and I keep putting it off. Um. And eventually we watched it. And oh my God, I think I'm crushing on Shah Rukh Khan. Because <laughs> in Happy New Year, the first scene you see him in, he's like in a fighting ring. And obviously he's topless. And I did not believe that was his body. Like I had to Google it because I was like, there's no way. That's like a proper 10 pack, like a 10 pack defined all of them with back muscles and side muscles <laughs> and then obviously because it's a Bollywood movie you get it in like 10 different angles in slow-mo there was an excuse to throw water on him and he'd do a hair flip while doing all of this with the muscles <laughs> and I was I was shooketh because he's like 40 something at the time this movie was made and it was his body like that was that was him doing that um so that was amazing. I would ten out of ten recommend. Also, it was a good <laughs> film, despite just Shah Rukh Khan's body. It was it was a really cool film um, about. It's very much Bollywood trying to do an oceans vibe. Oh, um, that's cool! So it's like a heist movie. It's a heist movie set in a dance competition, and how that comes about, which is it's funny and it's heartwarming and it's all that stuff and then the next movie we watched was Om Shanti Om also really good it's not I mean all Bollywood movies tend to be a similar level of if it's mm. a if it's a romance it tends to be a similar level of cheese but this one was really good even Steve at some point got like super hooked into it because yeah it it there's it has to do with reincarnation. So you have Shah Rukh Khan playing two people and set in the 70s and then coming back into like a modern day vibe and getting revenge and doing the things. And it was just really, really cool. So yeah, I'm somehow crushing on Bollywood movies after all this time. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> I mean, and you, you've always kind of been a fan. It's not like... I know, I mean, but you introduced I was very... me to Bollywood movies. I was very like I watched the Bollywood movies that were popular when I was that was popular everywhere like Kabi Kushi mm. or Kuch Kuch or Kabuna or it, it's been a while since I was attempting to watch stuff I hadn't already seen and just mm. watching it so that Steve could see my point of reference. Yeah. Um. So it was cool to like discover new Bollywood stuff together, even though it was very old movies. <laughs> <laughs> I um. So this week, like literally in like two days, I watched. All of Hacks. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so this is... So Hacks is a, a comedy series. Um, it has Jean Smart as as this woman, Deborah Vance. And she's like a, a old, like an aging comedian. Um, she's like a Joe Nervous type. And then there's this, there's this comedy writer called Ava, played by Hannah Einbinder, whose mother, Lorraine Newman, was one of the original Saturday Night Live cast members. Like in real life. But anyway, so this character, Ava, she's like a, a comedy writer. And then she gets canceled for making like a joke on Twitter. And then she just like, she loses her job. And she she's like trying to find a job. And then they kind of get her this, this job writing for Deborah. And Deborah has never hired a writer before. But she, they kind of mm. vibe and they hate each other. Then they like each other. And it's also like a mentorship type thing. But it's such an interesting dynamic. Because it's not just like... This, oh, these old people are so out of touch and all oh, these young people are so entitled. It's mm. like it shows you like the pros and cons of both and like, you know, you know, like what the millennial girl is or Gen Z is struggling with and also what 
the older woman, like, especially being a woman, like, I mean, obviously you see this in Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, you see this in a lot mm-hmm. of other shows, but, like, being a woman in comedy is was difficult. And the way that she sort of, like, she paved her way and how to refresh her content and all that sort of things, it's it's very it's very heartwarming and it's also very funny and you know, I I enjoyed it so much. Like I watch I started watching the first episode and then I was like sucked in. Cool. And it's ten episodes. So I watch like five one day and the next day I watch five and I was done and I was just like, okay, what now? But <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been crashing on this week. I'm a big fan of it. It was really good. It was really well done. Amazing. <laughs> but Thank you so much for joining me, Leanne. And thank you for everyone who listened to the thing thus far. Um, Hope you have a great two weeks. We will see you with our next episode, episode 10. The show is produced by me, Karen, and Rebecca Barches. The show is edited and engineered by Rebecca Barches. Our admin is done by Leanne Philipson. Our logo was designed by Nathifa Maruf. And the show was created in partnership with IGN Africa. If you like the show, tell everyone that you can, any way that you can. Keep up to date with our episodes by subscribing to the show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And please rate and review the episodes on Apple Podcasts, as it helps others find the show. We'll be back in two weeks with another in-depth conversation with a pop culture lover. See you then.